What you get up to on the waves is as changeable as the weather, literally. England, eh? How many times has this happened to you? On the strength of a good forecast, you drive all the way to your local beach, and this is what you find. Hissing with rain, dead onshore wind, mushy waves. But you don't associate it with Hukipa Beach, Maui, which is exactly where we are. Well, this is a bit different from the image peddled in the magazines and the video, doesn't it? But a change of wind direction from cross to onshore and in 24 hours the place is unrecognisable. Yes, wind and waves combine in many different ways to produce an ever-changing and not always perfect playground. But what most need to know to begin with is what direction they should be approaching the waves, both on the way out and on the way in. But it all depends on the wind direction. And if to begin with you just think about following your natural course across the wind, you usually go in the right direction and do more or less the right thing. Let me draw it for you. Waves coming in, and here's the beach. If you have a cross onshore wind direction like that, your natural reaching course takes you diagonally out through the waves and then diagonally back in again. And when you're on the wave face, you're traveling upwind with your back to the wave. Onshore winds generally place the emphasis on jumping. Blowing in uninterrupted off the sea, the wind is solid right up to the shoreline, so you can plane off the beach and hit the inside ramps with speed. Your natural track is diagonally out, so you have to luff up to hit the waves head on. On the way in, riding with your back to the wave is more natural and less scary, as it's easier to control your power and speed sailing close to the wind. You can ride downwind, it's just a lot harder. You end up so broad to the wind that you have to perform most of the ride clue first. It's advanced stuff, but worth the effort. Same situation, there's the beach, waves coming in. This time we've got a side shore wind. So your natural reaching course across the wind is directly out through the waves and then back in again. But this time on the wave face, you've got the scope for either going upwind or downwind, depending which way the wave's breaking. The true sideshore wind, if you can find it, is the stuff of dreams. You crack out on a reach, smack the waves head on to get the biggest jumps. But the reality is that unless it's an outer reef or a point, the wind is often blocked inshore by a headland meaning for jumps you sometimes don't have the power and speed as you meet the inside ramps. But on the way back in, you can work the wave comfortably both upwind with your back to the wave and downwind facing the wave through 180 degrees without changing tack. And finally, in a side offshore wind direction, once again, you're traveling diagonally out and diagonally back in again, but this time on the wave face, you're going downwind with it, facing the wave, and that's why your true wave rider favors side offshore conditions. Yes, plumes of spray being whipped off the back of a peaking swell by an offshore wind has the committed wave rider slobbering at the mouth. The choppers had no space in which to build up, and the wind holds the waves up to leave beautiful rideable faces. And now the bad news. The wind is invariably all over the place by the beach. Just getting through the shore break is an ordeal, as you not only have to cope with the severe gusts and lulls, but also have to bear away and confront the waves on a broad reach. Jumping is consigned to the bin, taking off with the wind from behind, where both speed and power are harder to control, while you are a nosedive waiting to happen. But on the way back in, you naturally find yourself facing the wave, riding front side down the line. Mm -hmm. 
with the wind blowing from the side as you crack off the top, the rig is at its most powerful. Hence the biggest wave riding aerials are usually performed in cross offshore winds.